Hey, welcome back. Mm-hmm. My name is Z dad, and uh, dad, dad, dad. No, I'm doing it this no, week. No, what you mean? No, no I'm doing no, you this week. You did it last week. No, you no. did it last week, bro. Hey, welcome. If you're here for the first time, my name is Z and I love making tutorials and tips on how I shoot my videos from the gear that I use to the software that I use. So if that's your kind of thing, please do consider checking out my Instagram. If you love what you see there, please do consider subscribing to my channel. If you have been here before, welcome back. So of course, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to clone yourself inside Premiere Pro. But before we dive into the software, there are a few things that um, I feel are important to note if you're doing something similar. So the first thing is you wanna record your video in a place where you can control the light. Uh, so I recorded in this room, of course, and I had the curtains closed and I use the studio light because at least I can control this light and depend on it being consistent. Um, this is important because I couldn't rely on the sun being consistent throughout the recording of this video. The second thing is something that I do also for consistency is to record one take. So if you're gonna do two clones, three clones, uh, just record from start to finish uh, as opposed to recording the first clone, stopping, recording the second clone and stopping. This way you avoid the risk of moving the camera or risking the camera changing its settings when you record for the second time. So with the video that you saw in the beginning, I recorded the first part, went and changed, left the camera recording, didn't touch it, and then uh, came back and recorded the second part. And then the third thing, so obvious, your camera needs to be on a tripod needs to be on something at least that keeps it steady and it doesn't move even a millimeter because uh, it makes such a huge difference. So with that said, grab your footage, fire up Premiere Pro and let's do this. So as you can see, I have one video. Like I said, I just did one long take. Uh, I actually did a number of different takes within that same video. So I'm going to look for the first part that I like. So I think I'm just going to use this take. I'm just going to drag it, drop it on my timeline, and then it creates a timeline for me. And then uh, second thing is I'm going to look for the second part. So I think I'm just going to use this one. Then I'm going to drag it and drop it here. So the first thing that I like to do is to uh, drag the other video on top of the other one. So drag your video layer up, drag your audio layer down, and then move it in like that. And if you're familiar with Premiere Pro, you'd know that video layers work in such a way that the video that's on top is the one that's shown. So if you have two videos, one is on top, one is at the bottom, um, this one is the one that shows and this one won't show. So what we wanna do with the top video is we wanna isolate the side that has our clone and then make the other side invisible so that it shows the video that's underneath it, which has the other clone which is on that side. So we do that by using a mask. I'm just gonna make these videos the same length so that they start together. And then I'm gonna move somewhere here, um, yeah, somewhere around about there. And then what we're gonna do is make sure the clip on top is the one that's selected and then go to effect controls and then go to opacity. And then you can use any of these, but I like to use, uh, especially for this, the Bezier tool or pen tool. Uh, make sure it's under opacity. And then if you click that, uh, it'll give you this icon and then just click to make points outside the frame and then click another one uh, there just to make a rectangle. So you'll see that once I complete the rectangle, it's just going to show the parts that are inside uh, or the part that's inside uh, the rectangle. And then it's going to make the rest of the frame invisible. And consequently, it's gonna reveal the other video that's at the bottom. Voila. So now that we have that, we are almost there, but just a few more tweaks. Uh, if I click outside, you'll see there's an evident line there showing that these are two different clips. So again, we'll click our clip that's on top and then just increase the mask feather under uh, mask inside effect controls. And you'll see that, you know, that line has disappeared. And again, it's looking good, but we're not yet there. Let me show you why. Because when we go back to the beginning, you'll see that, uh, something going on there. That's pretty much the video on top. 
which we made a mask of. So if I click here and click on mask, you see that it's now covering part of our character who's in the bottom video. Uh, but if we move up the timeline, it becomes okay. So what we wanna do with this first part, because that first part is important, uh, we want to keyframe this mask. And keyframing a mask is pretty much determining how it moves. So we'll set keyframes to make it move in with the clone that's in the video on top. So what we wanna do is move to somewhere just before the clone comes in. So run about there. Um, so run about there, right? And then we go um, under uh, effect controls again, go under mask and then next to mask path, just click on this time icon or animation icon and you will notice that it creates uh, a keyframe here and this is a software just recording the position of your mask at this particular time in the timeline so we want to move it uh, and the easiest way is to click on mask here so that it reveals the mask here and if you go inside your mask you'll see that it gives you a hand icon and that allows you to just click and drag so I'll move it out and then I'll go to my timeline and move a few frames ahead um, and then go back to the program window and move this mask in just a little bit. And you'll see that it creates another keyframe there. So what that essentially means is from here, it's gonna move from there to there. So what we're gonna do is move a few more frames ahead uh, around about there go back to the program window and just move this mask in again. Again, it will create another keyframe there. And I think that should be fine. Uh, so if, if I play back, you'll see that the mask is moving in. So what that now does to our video is it makes it realistic. So if I play back now. Hey, welcome back. My name is C. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm doing it. What you mean? No, no, I'm doing it this week. You did it last week. You did it last week, bro. No, no. So basically that's how you can, you know, make a clone. There are different ways of, you know, of course making a clone, but this is like basics to making a clone of yourself inside Premiere Pro. And once you get the hang of this, you can even make three clones, four clones. I don't know, as many as you want, as long as you can plan it well, and as long as you know the tools to use. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, leave a like below and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, Cause you know, it helps the channel. But apart from that, thank you for watching this video throughout and see you in the next video. Peace out.